Next talk is on the role of oocyte vitrification in fertility preservation by Goral Gandhi. We heard uh, Dr. Uh, Goral Gandhi speaking about vitrification in the morning, and she is the laboratory director at Rotunda, the Center for Human Reproduction, since its inception in the year 2000. The title of my talk today is The Role of Oocyte Crop Preservation, Oocyte Vitrification for Fertility Preservation. As all of us know and all of us have learned, there are many reasons why we need to have an optimum crop preservation program for oocytes in our laboratories. Reasons such as fertility preservation for cancer patients, women at risk of premature menopause, building donor oocyte banks, legal and ethical considerations in certain countries which do not allow embryo crop preservation, no sperm collected at oocyte collection, and social reasons. Now, med medical reasons such as fertility preservation for cancer patients. With improvements in cancer treatment, it is estimated that by the year 2015, one in every five cancer patients will survive, and one in every 250 individuals will be a cancer survivor. Now, this is a tremendous new hope for these cancer patients, and it is raising new concerns, concerns about their fertility. Because, as we know, survival comes at a cost for these patients, cost of their fertility, because we have, there is adverse effect of chemotherapy on ovarian function. So, there is a pendulum. There are two sides. There is survival and there is quality of life. And we are going to keep a balance. We want survival for these patients and we are going to provide them with good quality of life. We are going to try our best to preserve their fertility. Now this issue, even the oncologists understood. In 2006, the American Society of Clinical Oncologists published recommendations which said that as part of the informed consent prior to therapy, oncologists should address the possibility of infertility, infertility with patients as early in treatment planning as possible. And this is a very important statement because we as fertility scientists see the cancer patients only after they are referred to us by oncologists. And if oncologists would understand the importance of fertility preservation, it would be a very big help to us. This would give us the time to do what we have to do. Another very important application of egg vit vitrification is building donor egg banks. If we can learn to use vitrified donor eggs instead of fresh eggs, the management of our egg donation program would become very easy. And finally, now we have new reasons to uh, learn to freeze oocytes, that is social reasons, social oocyte freezing or elective oocyte freezing. Now we know about the diminishing ovarian reserve. A female fetus at 20 weeks of gestation carries about 7 million eggs in her ovaries. The day she is born, she is left with just about 2 or 3 million oocytes. At puberty, only about 15% of these oocytes are left. And by the time she reaches the age of 30, she is left with only 12% oocytes. And by the time she reaches age of 40, only 3% of these oocytes are remaining. And unfortunately, this number, the decline in numbers is also associated with a decline in quality. So unfortunately, the aging process starts really early for women. So there is a ticking of the biological clock and it goes only one way. The reservoir of oocytes is getting depleted. There is now what we know as gamete exhaustion. So last but certainly not the least reason to freeze oocytes is to give some flexibility to women as far as the time frame within which they can reproduce is concerned. For women with the oocyte quality and production declining, declining with age, the ability to reproduce is only for about 15 years, coinciding exactly with the time which is crucial for establishing their professional career. Now this is unlike men who can potentially reproduce for a very long time span of almost 50 years. So I believe we must use this available technology to bridge the gap in this aspect of gender discrimination by nature. So with all this information, why has it taken so long to introduce oocyte crab preservation? As we know, the first embryo was crab preserved almost 40 years ago, and it's only now that we are talking about oocyte crab preservation. This is because the oocyte is a very special and sensitive cell. 
oocytes are the largest cells of the human body. In crab biology, the size and mass of the cell is a very crucial factor affecting survival. The almost spherical shape of the oocyte slows down equal distribution of the permeable cryoprotectants, thus increasing the challenge in successful cryopreservation. The lowest possible cell number, 1, makes freezing the oocyte very difficult. It is all or nothing. Multicellular embryos can survive even after losing one or more cells, but the oocyte has only one chance and there is no backup to regenerate from a serious injury. Then there is zona pellucida hardening, cytoplasmic damage, meiotic spindle damage, osmotic shock that can occur during dilution and may result in extensive swelling, rupture of the membrane and immediate death of the oocyte. So as you can see, freezing the oocyte is somewhat similar to a big hurdle race and we have to use an extremely careful approach to come out of this race as winners. There are two main methods of cryopreservation, slow freezing and vitrification. There are many differences between the two methods, but a very important difference affecting survival is that in slow freezing, there can be a lot of ice crystal formation, whereas vitrification by definition avoids ice crystal formation. Now, if you have only 3% of intracellular water converting into ice, you will have cell death. If you see the crystals growing inside the cell, you will see the edge of the crystals cutting into the cell membrane. This is what you can see. But what you cannot see is the crystals breaking mitochondria, destroying organelles inside the oocyte or the embryo. The cell perhaps can survive, but the damage done to the internal machinery is very high. Because of all these difficulties associated with oocyte crop preservation, for many years, there was a lot of prejudice related to oocyte crop preservation, and it was considered experimental by the ASRM. But this was in 2006. Today, things have changed. In 2012, ASRM has changed this label. Guidelines were published, which stated evidence indicates that oocyte vitrification and warming should no longer be considered experimental. This is a very important statement coming from the biggest society in human reproduction. And how did it happen? It is based on a lot of evidence in literature. So this is some evidence here, some publications from 2008 onwards, starting with the paper in 2008 by Anna Kobo using Dr. Masashige Kuwayama's vitrification method comparing fresh and vitrified donor oocytes. And as you can see, some of these have been randomized control trials. So this gives a very high level of evidence when comparing a new technique. ICSI was introduced without randomized control trials. Embryo crab preservation was introduced without randomized control trials. But for oocyte crab preservation, it has been done. And we should really look at these results and we should incorporate these techniques in our laboratories. Now, randomized control trials means high level of evidence-based medicine. And if it is a meta-analysis of randomized control trials, then you are on the top of a pyramid, very high level of evidence-based medicine. This is a meta-analysis of five randomized control trials from 2011, assessing the efficacy of oocyte vitrification in terms of its survival, fertilization rate, embryo development, and pregnancy rates. Five eligible studies were included and it was concluded that vitrification is an efficient method to preserve oocytes. And at that time, this paper was the most downloaded paper on the internet. So imagine how many people were interested all around the globe in oocyte crab preservation. And all these publications have made ASRM change their mind. There have been many concerns regarding the safety of oocyte vitrification. And with vitrification techniques being used in labs all over the world, it is very essential to establish the safety of the method. IVF has potential risk for sure. Any kind of assisted reproductive technique has some potential risk. There are many concerns regarding alterations of the cytoplasm and its dynamics and chromosomal aberrations associated with oocyte cryopreservation. And scientists, patients and everyone is asking the question, 
is it safe to offer this as a fertility preservation technique to young women? I think before answering this question, we must remember one very important fact. There is enough evidence to, provide, to prove that chromosomal abnormalities are associated with age. And it is a dramatic correlation. We now know through PGS that at 40 years of age, we have almost 75% of embryos that have chromosomal abnormalities. Mm -hmm. So if I think about using a 32-year-old vitrified oocyte or a 42-year-old fresh oocyte, I would feel that it is much safer for sure to use a young vitrified oocyte. Because although we do not have enough data about oocyte cryopreservation, preservation, we have a lot of data about age-related chromosomal abnormalities. So for me, it is a safer practice to use a young vitrified oocyte than a fresh 42-year-old oocyte. Now, this study was conducted to check the neonatal outcomes of babies born using vitrified oocytes. The authors reviewed a total of 58 reports from 1996 to 2008. Of the total 936 newborns, 1.3% had birth anomalies. No difference was noted in birth defect rates when compared with naturally conceived babies. And with many recent studies now reporting similar findings, oocyte vitrification procedures are becoming more and more common. Now, let us look at the meiotic spindles of frozen thawed oocytes. As we know, the meiotic spindles are crucial for the events following fertilization at completion of meiosis, second polar body formation, migration of pronuclei. The spindle is very sensitive to cryoprotectants and low temperature. Oocytes analyzed immediately after thawing displayed severe disorganization or disappearance of spindles. An incubation for one to three hours resulted in recovery of spindles. So for an oocyte vitrification program, we must remember the time schedule when we vitrify our oocytes. There is uh, oocyte aging and there is spindle recovery. The optimum time for ICSI for human oocytes is between 37 to 41 hours post HCG. And inseminating the oocyte soon after thawing when there is serious spindle disorganization adversely affects fertilization outcome. Therefore, considering these competing aspects of oocyte aging and spindle recovery is essential for a successful oocyte crab preservation program. We usually perform oocyte retrieval at 35 hours post HCG. Vitrification of oocytes is performed at 2 hours after oocyte retrieval. ICSI is performed at 3 hours after thawing. So this is about 40 hours post HCG. So I would like to share our results of oocyte vitrification at Rotunda. We use Crowtech vitrification for our oocyte crowd preservation program. This is a comparison of the laboratory parameters of fresh and vitrified donor oocytes. I have looked at the fertilization rate, cleavage rate and percentage of good grade embryos. And I was very happy and very surprised that the in vitro performance of the vitrified oocyte was really similar to what we normally accept from fresh oocytes. They were behaving the same way. There was no statistical difference in fertilization rate, cleavage rate and percentage of good grade embryos. But this is only laboratory results. What we want is a baby for our patients. The fact that the oocytes behave very well in the laboratory is only a small part of the story. It is much more difficult to demonstrate the efficacy from a clinical point of view. Because there we have a lot of confounding factors related to the patients. So again, this is a comparison of clinical outcomes of fresh and vitrified donor oocytes. These are all the oocytes from young donors where pregnancy rates are high and there are very few confounding factors. So the live birth rate that we got with vitrified oocyte was 45.3% and it was comparable to our live birth rate with fresh oocytes. Now I think that all these percentages that we saw do not mean much when we have to freeze oocytes for cancer patients. Cancer women have a very limited time to freeze their oocytes and future fertility before they start chemotherapy. Four or five oocytes is all they have in their entire lifespan to achieve motherhood. 
they are placing this hope in our hands and our trust. It is our responsibility to ensure that we give them a live baby from these five or six oocytes that they have. So is a method giving 90 or 95% survival rate good enough for them? Can you afford to lose even one oocyte from these four or five oocytes that a woman has? No. We have to do our best to help these young girls become mothers one day in future when they are cured of the disease. We have to do our best to keep this precious life of human oocyte and embryos with no damages. And luckily, we now have the technology available that does give us these fantastic results and tremendous hope for our patients. Thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Masashi Kuwayama for personally training me in cryotech vitrification. And this is my wonderful team of embryologists back home. Thank you all.